Are we live? Can you guys hear me? How many times have I started to stream? I go off on a long rampage, long monograph, monogram, Mo monologue. It's late monologue and no one can understand me for like five minutes. Hopefully you guys can hear me. We're here for one reason, and that is for the Elantra N. Honda Civic Type R fighter, sort of. Time will tell. Hopefully it comes with a manual. If it just comes with the 8-speed DCT like uh, the Kona N does, I mean, I mean, that's cool, right? But it, manual's cooler, even if it's slower. Anyways, guys, thanks for coming out. Where are you guys coming from? Luis. It could be Lewis. Could definitely be Lewis. <laughs> Lewis Hartenstein. Hola from Baton Rouge. Thanks for coming out. Hawks here. Uh, so many people. I saw uh, Larry the Short Guy earlier. Sykesapop was here. Experiority from Silver Springs, Missouri. Mike Wellington's in the house. DKA Bits. The Con. You guys are coming from Vancouver, New York. Massachusetts. Steven coming in. What's up, Steven from Texas? North Carolina, Miami. Brother. Neighbor. Right across the street. Um, Mr. Hawk, I think, called me out a minute ago. And he's like, hey, you're a minute late. <laughs> and I would have actually started a, a tad bit earlier. But there was a, a family emergency. My two-year-old spotted a wolf spider in the house <laughs> and I had to extract it. I think I did without killing it, by the way. I was very proud of myself. Wolf spiders, man, they're a dime a dozen in the United States of America. Luckily, they're, they're pretty harmless. They just get really big and ugly. <laughs> I guess that's North America's version of a tarantula. But check this out. So we're going to replay this. It does sound good. So that's all we have right now until five more minutes or so. And I wanted to talk about this maybe after the stream is over. Uh, we have official packaging and pricing of the Santa Cruz, which fingers crossed, it sounds like I may be able to go to the, um, the media drive event for this. So definitely put your prayers out so I can go and bring it to you guys firsthand. Uh, the Santa Cruz pickup truck, that would be amazing. Um, I'm just waiting to hear from Hyundai, hopefully keeping my fingers crossed on that one. Uh, but I'd love to bring it to you guys in person. If I can't, that's fine. You know, it's fine. Anyways, we have the pricing and packaging here. Um, we can geek out at, uh, about it after the stream. And then I also have this as a backup because how many times have I done a live stream for like a huge reveal for other brands and like, it's, it's not up where they say it's going to be, and I have to check global pages. So this is my backup. I'm at uh, the YouTube page for Hyundai here. This is their global page. And this is where they teased a week ago the Elantra N. So going back to where I would suspect that they would do the launch is the HyundaiN.com page. And... What's this? What's snag 43 code map? I don't know. I don't know what that means. So yeah, we're back to square one here and we're just waiting. Nothing about the GR Corolla disappointing. Well, you know, good things come to those who wait. That's all I'll say. I may or may not know some things about a potential next GR product, but GR is alive and well. <clears throat> Have a look at the Hyundai in Worldwide channel instead. Instead of the Hyundai Worldwide? Let me see if I can find it. YouTube. Uh, in Worldwide. 
Okay, okay. Here's our, probably our go-to backup. Oh, perfect. Perfect, there we go. Whoever suggested that. Uh, Joel Torisi, you're a legend. Absolute legend. Absolute legend. Thank you, man. You guys kick serious butt. TRD RAV4, this started as a Toyota channel. Actually started as a fitness channel way back in the day. And then it, it became a Lexus channel, kind of. Uh, and then it became a dad channel. And then it became, oh, we got the countdown. Let me turn this down, it's so loud. It's so loud in my ears. I'll turn this down. And then after it was a dad channel, I went back to car news. And when I did that, I opened up to Toyota. So it's been a journey, and then it was Toyota Lexus for a while, then I opened up to all Japanese brands, and then about, I don't know, it was a year ago? You guys wanted to hear more about the Koreans, and I wanted to start covering them, because they're very interesting. So they've been in the fold, and yeah, it's just a slow, natural growth. I don't want to force anything, and I definitely don't want to cover anything I'm not passionate about, um, or I'm not interested in in any sort of the manner. So, you guys don't have to worry about me covering domestic brands <laughs> anytime soon. None of them get me excited. Even a little bit. Not even a little bit. Is it coming to Canada? I would think so. When is the new Honda Odyssey 2023? Uh, maybe 2024? As a 2024 model year? Do I still have my old videos? What do you mean, like my old fitness videos? I think I made them all private. No one needs to be, no one needs to watch that. I, I was an excellent fitness instructor. I have a degree, a bachelor's degree in exercise science, but I'm not passionate about it. I got really burnt out on fitness. Really burnt out on it. Will, what's up, what's up, what's up? Nismo Sentra to battle this, that would be epic. It's Jay, subbed, thanks bro, thanks for the sub. Oh, a second countdown, gosh, oh, countdowns. Oh, countdowns. Let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger for you guys though. Oh, what was that? Are, are they giving us teasers inside of a countdown? Yes, they are. See if I can make this bigger. Hey, that's pretty good. What do you guys think about that? I can always adjust this. It's not bad. Young Brevi loves the channel. Thanks, man. Kona N, when is it coming? That's a good question. Pretty soon, you would think. Kirk, would you go to the LA Auto Show uh, like the Radies? Going to auto shows does not get me excited. I know it's a huge opportunity for growth and for me and the channel. To me, it's just not worth leaving the family for like a week to do walk arounds on cars that I know pretty much everything about. I've already covered them on the channel. There are exceptions though. There are sometimes new product reveals, but I'm gonna be Where I'm gonna be quiet. Driving passion come from? Is it something we're born with? A childhood memory? A favorite toy? Igniting the imagination. Stirring the senses. Awakening them. And as we grow, we learn the fundamentals. Stick shift. Does that confirm the stick shift for the launcher N? I think it does. Dedicating ourselves to driving. See the old Tibber on there? Ignited by those sparks, we opened up N's way. We are sharpened in competition. We're not.
not defying the norm. We're elevating it. We collaborate to strive for the high performance and everyday drivability. We engineer it down to the last detail, to perfect cornering, to give it that something extra, that bang. Our relentless effort is decoded. This is what we share with the world today. friction brake pads and even the dust cover was redesigned for maximum cooling the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires maximize the carving feel in every phase of cornering the second generation electronic control suspension offers a wide range of firmness settings firm lateral support connects the driver to the road and more balanced damping offers the best ever comfortable ride for your family. For your family? The newly applied torque feedback RNDPS provides consistent and accurate steering. ELSD minimizes the understeer and guarantees the end's unique carving feel. Our mission is to transfer motorsports knowledge to production models. Originally developed for a WRC rally car, IDA's innovative one-piece structure withstands extreme lateral G-force and provides a responsive steering, all while reducing the weight. The chassis has been strengthened by reinforcing the powertrain mount, four-point strut ring, V-stay, center tunnel stay, rear tunnel brace, and rear stiff bar. The N-Track Sense Shift will automatically recognize when you're at the track and will select the optimal gear and execute the perfect shift. The revolutionary Hyundai N application saves and analyzes your speed, lap time, G-force, throttle, and brake pressure. You can even see how you That's stack crazy. up against other drivers. It's like a video game. Elantra N stands lowest height in class, providing a low center of gravity. And that, along with a lowered seating position, connects you with the road in one of the most aerodynamic performances in its class. The three-bridge spoiler increases the rear downforce. Take the wheel in the sport bucket seat or relax in the comfortable back seat. With the Elantra N, you get the best of both worlds, performance and practicality. 
groundbreaking end sound equalizer allows you to customize the engine sound because there's nothing like the sound of a little crackle that ignites your love of driving. This is the yeah. new end for those who still remember that spark. Yes. Who come alive in every corner and smile at the double curve sign. Fascination has arrived. We are bringing that pure grin. This is Elantra N. Yes. Ooh. They have all the meanings of the, I guess it's almost like a index of all the uh, acronyms. Okay, I need to uh, like mute this because that'll get, um, yes, I'll get flagged for that, for that song, I'm sure. <clears throat> Do I think Kia will get their own version? I, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, Kia has their GT products, but I, I don't think they're going to do anything like this. So, I just love the fact that here we have Hyundai, who is assaulting on all fronts. Like, they're, they're making this car for car people. People who want to drive a manual transmission and, and have that visceral experience. And they're also making the Ionic lineup fully electric vehicles, and they're also making fuel cell cars. They're making everything. They are they have their hands like in every single basket. It's very very impressive. Uh, so wait, is this a? Here, is this still Many going? People have actually asked me about what do we do about electrification this and is racing. Cool. I wasn't expecting this. What do you have in mind? Now, everybody knows that electrification is key to success in the future to come. And by the way, this is our responsibility and our credo. We have electrification, we have hybrids, we have a lot of prototypes uh, in the pipeline. All right. Please imagine for a moment, we, uh, for the past six years, we have driven with internal combustion engine. And now it's time to get it changed. Yeah, I think with eGMP, we have a very substantial platform to bring sustainable driving fun to our enthusiasts on the road and, and on the track. And uh, I think after some end-specific treatments, it would be tons of fun to, to drive around Nordschleife with uh, an end vehicle based on eGMP. And I can see many, many corners where yeah, our combustion cars might have some trouble to follow our EGMP and car. So, uh, interesting. I'm looking forward to uh, Ionic 5N. The, the corner rest. I guess it'd be probably based on the Ionic 6. Based on EGMP. Can you imagine to fly through the green hell with this platform? And now we have to look N. for the right hair. Maybe we sick. make a bare bone. We just put we know a chair there and the steering wheel. There's going to be a Kia the EV6 GT. So that's yeah. Yeah. the point anyway. Which, which upper body should we take? I mean, we have more? choices, right? Our I think it's about, will be I think it's almost 500 if I remember right. Believe. Do you remember the sketches Sanyup showed us? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. Very, very sexy. So it's uh, very nice looking. It's definitely there. Uh, the potential to make a true end vehicle. But should we only talk about battery? Hydrogen, I guess, is also a very interesting thing to combine and to find the right idea in the future to come. Maybe you remember our Mecha protocol with the fuel cell in the front and the high power PE battery electric system in the rear. And uh, yeah, with our modular fuel cell system, we, we can make a nice package, I think. Did you hear that? A uh, hybrid between fuel cell and battery drones? electric. I've oh, never, don't worry. never heard don't of worry that before. <laughs> we have hydrogen technology and I think the combination, hydrogen, battery electric, EGMP. Mm. Oh, that's that a is a very sustainable, enjoyable and driving, even in endurance racing. Weird. Yeah. Let's go for it. Way to go. Let's make it happen. Make it happen. Holy cow, they're pushing the envelope. Oh look, they have a prototype right there, a hydrogen fuel stack and a fat battery too. Weird. I love it.
Reminds you of the Corolla design. Yeah, it's in the same segment. They're gonna they're gonna share, I guess, a similar uh, foot footprint. So let's see if there's anything on here. Nope. And let's refresh this real quick. See if the Hyundai N website has been fixed, or I should say updated. It's totally cool and weird. It can totally be both. Stalls HQ, what's going on? James Connor asked a question. Time, well, or a statement. Time to make a competitor to this automation. Not gonna leave the stream though. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what you're saying. I don't see anything else here on their, uh, on this end website. If I go to models here. What's it gonna show us? Okay. None of those are the Elantra N. Ona ends there. I guess Elantra N will go in this square. I don't know if you guys can see it properly. Looks like you guys can see it okay. Yeah, but that is not updated either. So I'll see you guys in the comments about the Elantra N. I feel like maybe this is updated now. Maybe they have a press release for it now. No, no press release. Hmm. I wonder if I go to... Like, a, let's see, let me go to the Hyundai Global page. Global Media. If anything with the Elantra in. Ah, here we go. We, we, it wasn't at the United States site, it was at the Global site. Hyundai Motorsport customer. Oh, wait, this is not it either. This is their track car. Well, what we just saw there, there doesn't seem to be any press releases up as of yet. So definitely wait for tomorrow, I guess. Um, I'll eventually make a video on it once that press release is up. But since I, guys ha since I have you guys here, Santa Cruz price and reveals a compelling new adventure vehicle. Um, prices start at $23,990. Now, it, does that include destination? I'm wondering. Rate charges, okay. Um, I don't think this is including freight charges. So about 1200 bucks on top of everything you see. So we're talking the vehicle starts at 25K it looks like after destination. Goes on sale late July so this month um hello my friend four i love you kirk i love you guys wherever you are in the world you guys pick serious but kona n looks good to go to the usa website as i'm in ontario yeah kona n looks pretty cool a 400 horsepower santa fe um <laughs> it's not necessary Eric just got the notification. YouTube always sends you notifications late. Yeah, YouTube. Yeah, they're not always uh, timely with their notifications. Use a VPN so it's like you're in South Korea. That's okay. <clears throat> Gotta say, it looked better with the camo on. Really, you think so? I don't think so. I think it looks better with, with an actual paint color. Santa Cruz is sort of, sort of understandable. <clears throat> Destination is different around the country? I, I don't think so. It just says a one flat shipping fee. Essentially, freight charge is $11.85. It's more expensive than the Maverick, yes. 
Yes, it is. Um, he, it is more expensive than the Maverick. It would be fun to do a comparison test between the two. Um, the top of the line here, guys, is a $40,000 pickup truck, <clears throat> which is a direct competitor, I guess, to the Ridgeline. I just reviewed the Ridgeline. It failed to really impress me. I think the updated looks look, look cool. HPD package is cool, but give it up so you can get a nicer interior if money's an issue for you. Like, I don't know. It, it just wasn't that impressive for me. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's a good pickup truck, no doubt, but I would not be interested in it. Uh, would I be interested in the Santa Cruz? Maybe. I'm not really a pickup truck guy. I like talking about them. Maybe if I get a boat one day, I'll, I'll get a pickup truck or something or a big SUV like a Sequoia that I can tow it with. But as of right now, like pickup trucks, I have a, I have a big family. A pickup truck doesn't do it. My honesty is what makes me shine. I'm just a dude who talks about cars. That's it. <laughs> and hangs out with you guys as much as I can. The Genesis car brand needs a Grand Tourer to compete against uh, the Lexus LC. Well, they have... I don't remember what the concept's called. But they have a coupe concept. And it's really good looking. They just haven't brought it out yet. And I think it might be fully electric. Uh, but it's just a concept. But it, that's, that part of the market is such a small, small, small part. No one's getting rich off that part of the market unless you're Porsche. Seen one ridge line for every 50 F-150s down here in Austin. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised it's that many. <laughs> I, I would have expected like one for every 100 F-150s. When are you going to get the new 2021 Sienna? What do you mean? Like for review, I already reviewed one. XSE package. I'm not going to get a new Sienna. Uh, there are a lot of things I don't like about it. And I don't want to compromise on a forty to $50,000 minivan. So there's, there's no minivan on the market right now that I want. And if there was, I would be interested in buying one. But the, I, I think I haven't reviewed the, the Kia Carnival yet. But as of right now... The Odyssey is a better van than the Sienna. Um, it's not perfect by any means, but it just works better for my family. Uh, the Sienna's packaging and and uh, lack of like a few features just it doesn't. It, I don't. I'm not a big fan of the new Sienna, other than its fuel economy. And I think the looks are okay. I kind of dig the looks, but there are a lot of things I don't like about this. The new Sienna. The new Sienna is great. Doesn't mean it's perfect. <laughs> what about the carnival? Uh, yeah, I just haven't had a chance to review it. So the good news is I have a Kia, my first Kia for review in the driveway, uh, Kia K5. So I'll be bringing in that to you guys in the next week or so. Um, the fact that I'm getting Kias now means a carnival has just got to be around the corner. So I'm excited to bring you guys more, more car reviews of every, every single kind. I also have a, a Sequoia TRD Pro review that I filmed this morning with the family. I took them to the beach in the Sequoia. It was a lot of fun. The thing's sandy as hell right now. Hopefully that's okay with the uh, with Drive Shop <laughs> that I got their Sequoia really sandy. But it's going to make for a really fun video. Uh, Mikey in Vegas, what's up? Thank you for the $5. How's it going? I'm excited to see what the Hyundai has up its sleeve with eGMP platform. Hopefully an end model. Yeah, no, it is very exciting. That that little like Easter egg at the end, talking about oh here's our ear GMP platform. We can make a uh, fully electric race car out of it. Oh by the way, we can also make a hydrogen fuel cell race car with batteries, like big big batteries, and kind of do a um, a hybrid of a fuel cell and battery electric, which. That sounds like a really, really heavy vehicle, but is it heavier than a full battery electric vehicle with a bunch of heavy batteries? I don't know. I'm not quite sure. Hyundai will figure it out. They got a lot of racing experience, so they'll figure it out. What upcoming car interests me the most? Fat Bananas putting me on the spot. 
Oh my gosh. I wish I had a quick answer. Um, I think I can answer more for like a genre of vehicle that excites me the most. Fully electric vehicles don't excite me the most. Uh, Plug-in hybrids excite me the most right now. Um, and I think as we get more plug-in hybrids, it's going to be a great thing. I had a Volvo XC90 recharge, and I enjoyed the heck out of that vehicle. Had a lot of downfalls. Uh, just wasn't big enough for my family being the main one. But I rarely, rarely drove that thing with its gasoline. And it was just quiet and enjoyable to drive uh, on the, the, the hybrid battery. Hybrid battery. Uh, so I think it's it's more so a genre thing. And once there's like a plug-in hybrid minivan that's not a Chrysler product, uh, I will be very, very interested and might put down money on a plug-in hybrid minivan because I'll be doing a lot of driving now that my kids are going to school next year. I want to spend as little on gas as possible, but I did the, I did the math and it was like, at worst, I would spend $1,500 driving the van for a year on gas, and that's paid off. And if I buy a new minivan, it's at least like $600 a month. <laughs> so plus, plus everything else, plus insurance. So like financially, a new car uh, for the family just doesn't make sense unless I absolutely need one. Um, and I'm lucky where I get to drive random new cars all the time. It's an amazing, amazing lifestyle I have thanks to you guys and your support. So I just went on a long tangent there. Hopefully I didn't uh, <laughs> get too far off the rails there. What about the Alphard Royal Lounge? Yeah, that's amazing. We don't, we don't get Alphards here, unfortunately. Um, the live has ended, yes. So um, yeah, the, the live stream's ended and... 280 horsepower of overboost, six-speed manual. Um, it's a lot stiffer than the current one, of course. More downforce. It's going to handle better. It's going to drive amazing. Just want to drive one. That's it. I just want to drive it. I just want to beat the heck out of it around a racetrack, uh, fly through the gears. It looks like it has auto-blipping downshifts for the transmission. So that makes it a lot easier on the racetrack. That is absolutely for sure. Um, <clears throat> Lexus UC is not going to be made like 99.999% sure. The Lexus UC is not a real thing. Uh, Mazda, where are you? Yeah, Mazda. We need more zoom in our lives, right? Two liter, 290 PS five point. Yeah. 5.2 zero to 60. 5.2. That is quick guys. That is quick. No GR Corolla news. Nope. I've been waiting for the rear wheel drive Mazda 6 for a minute. Yeah, many people have. Check the N website again. Okay. Ah, no, is this it? Is this it? Am I in the right spot? I'm not seeing anything here. Ah, here we go. Here we go. Here we go, guys. If you were late to the live stream, um, that's it. That's it right there. What's this? Kona in, and then the European cars, it looks like. <laughs> so here is the launcher in. Boom. Thanks for reminding me of the refresh. Leo the short guy says party time. There it is, guys. If you missed the live stream portion, here it is. The information that it gives you is insane in this vehicle um okay it looks like maybe the uh website's not quite done i don't know what that's going on there but here we are better look at the grill now <clears throat> i think it looks okay i mean I wasn't a huge fan of the Elantra's looks in the first place, the base one, but I think this looks a little bit better. And I, I do think the, the natural lines of the Elantra look better on this end model. 280 PS, 40 kilogram feet meters, 5.3 seconds, 
zero to 100 kilometers an hour so zero to 60 is even faster 5.2 seconds or so um, here's all the technology and engineering that goes into it <clears throat> 19 inch wheels on an elantra guys what what kind of times are we living in if you would have told me 10 years ago that there would be an elantra with 280 ps and 19 inch wheels designed for the track <laughs> I'm like, what? What kind of future? What kind of future is this? But oh my gosh, yeah, it looks a lot better with these side. I call it the Zorro Z uh, in this Elantra compared to the standard one. Looks cool. Not bad. I want to drive it, I, and, and it definitely doesn't look completely over the top, in my opinion, like the Civic Type R does. Definitely much more subdued. Doesn't have a huge wing on it. The exhaust looks good on it. It's gonna sound even better. It's gonna sound better than the Civic Type R. Um, this one has paddle shifters on it, so it looks like you'll be able to uh, get one with the eight-speed DCT. Man, that's cool. This is a cool car. That brakes on it. Dig in the seats. That's a nice shifter. Here's the um, <clears throat> DCT setup, so you guys can see. There's a normal shifter, paddle shifters back there. <clears throat> Reverse Zorro lines. Yeah, you know, put it in a mirror, right? It'll look like a normal Z. I don't know. You get heated seats in it. <clears throat> if you're racing around, you probably don't need those heated seats. Has a lower heat, uh, has a lower uh, seating position, 10 millimeters lower. The lowest among N models. Wow. It's cool. <clears throat> I can't remember what this is for. In my review, I couldn't find out what it was for either. Uh, I did research and, and looked in the brochure. I couldn't find out what this was for. Uh, this weird circle thing on the left side of the dash. You guys remember to let me know. I think there is a purpose for it. I just, just don't know what it is. I can't remember. No pricing yet. Nope. And I don't think we know availability either. I would expect it to be by the end of this year for sure, right? When, when the hell can we buy it in the States? Probably by the end of the year. So the, here's the Sonata in line, which I haven't tested yet. Hopefully I can. Um, this looks like the N, the Kona N, which would be fun. It's not available here in the States yet, I don't believe. Should be soon. Should be soon. 40 kilogram feet meters feet meter to pound feet well you you guys probably already beat me to it but 40 kilogram feet meters is uh, a 289 pound feet of torque <clears throat> oh there used to be a drive mode button there interesting Any price leaks? No, I haven't seen anything about price for this vehicle. And this is typically how all manufacturers do it. They tease the vehicle. They show the vehicle. They give you general specs. Um, then they do, I mean, they might do another thing in there, but then they do a full press release for, uh, packaging and pricing typically together but it's usually like at least a three stage or four stage with all the teasers so teasers product reveal yeah yeah it's and then and then they'll, they have to make another announcement for availability so they'll do like pricing packaging and then they'll do another another release later for oh, saying okay this is this is when you can buy it 
So it's a, it's like at least a three or four step process for a car brand to give us all the information. And the reason is, well, there are a lot of reasons for it. One, to build hype. But two, they oftentimes haven't figured out exactly how the vehicle is going to be packaged or priced. So they're like, okay, well, we're done with the vehicle and we can show it now, essentially. And so they, they figure out the logistics and uh, how to make money on the packages and things like that. Uh, let's see. Jenna is saying about 36, 36K. Yep, it's possible. To set the turn signal feature that other Kia Hyundai Genesis models have, do you mean that you have the blind spot monitor display behind the steering wheel? I highly doubt it. I'm sure they don't have 360 camera on this vehicle uh, to keep weight down. That'd be my assumption. And to keep price down. People are saying low 30s. Okay, that's good to hear. GLX Type S is a killer compared to this. They're totally different vehicles. The, the closest competitors are going to be like the, the Golf GTI uh, and the Civic Type R. Um, any upcoming Gazoo racing vehicle from Toyota, essentially. Did, you, did I see the new details of 2022 QX60? Yes, I actually made a video on it. Um, you guys can probably see parts of the video here. I made, I finished the video on it. So it took me forever. Uh, it's, it's a long video. It's like 13 minutes long. So that should be up sometime tomorrow, maybe tomorrow evening. Um, I have a video on, a, on Lexus Special Edition RX 350L going up tomorrow morning, uh, I think. And then that video, and then I need to work on my Sequoia review. Like I'm, I'm backed up right now. So like, that's why when the, I saw this, I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to make a video on the Santa Cruz pricing uh, because like I just I, I, I'm a one man show. I can only do so much. Um, and then like if there's something random that comes up that I have to make a video on, like the Tundra teased the Panda roof today. I didn't have to make a video on it, but like I want to update you guys on, on the, the Tundra stuff as fast as possible. So I stopped everything I was doing, which was a QX60 video. Uh, and I stopped that to, no, it was actually the Lexus RX video. Stopped that to be able to make Tundra video. Once that was done, I finished the RX video and then I made a QX6. It's just, it's crazy, crazy. Leo says, thanks for all the videos. I mean, thank you guys for watching. I'm glad you guys find, find me at least a, a tiny bit entertaining and a tiny bit informational. A year after it's released, they'll make another announcement. The famous Hyundai recall. Oh, oh gosh. Oh gosh. You guys and your jokes. But guys, it's, it's pretty late for me. It's nine o'clock. I'm going to answer the last two questions here. Um, I'm going to keep looking at what we have here for uh, the Santa Cruz. Standard features, 18 inch wheels, LED tail lamps, cargo area lighting, integrated rear bumper, side steps, privacy glass, wireless car play under auto, that's nice. Composite bed versus a steel bed, interesting. Guess that keeps the weight down lockable underfloor bed storage and then you can do things like that because yes <laughs> a power locking tailgate rear 60 40 flip up lower cushions okay the rest is safety stuff so we have pricing on the packages do we have the details on the packages i don't think we do 
we just have all these different packages here. Now, how it works is these are just the front wheel drive ones. So if you want an all wheel drive Santa Cruz, your base price is going to be $25,490 plus $11, uh, essentially $1,200 for destination. So you're looking at, I don't know, close to $27K for an all-wheel drive Santa Cruz base with the 2.5 liter four-cylinder. I want to say that has like 185 horsepower or so. If you want to get the turbo, you're spending 37k essentially. Dami Omolal. I I'm trying. Dami, I'll just say Dami. Dami. It's hard for me to pronounce things. Dami, thank you so much for the 279. Is there significance to 279? That's a very specific amount of Canadian money. You may have like, I don't know. Is there significance to it? <laughs> there might be the significance is is your generosity and i thank you dummy i'm sorry for not attempting your last name but you're very generous so thank you when will the lexus rx refresh be released well it will have a redesign and that will be coming uh in fall of 2022 so we learned about the nx was it early June? So I'm expecting early June for the RX um, to be uh, announced and then availability for fall of 2022. Why is the infotainment screen small? <laughs> Let me go back to here. What, on the Veloster end? Or excuse me, the Elantra end? The Elantra end has a big infotainment screen. Let me go back to it. Look at this thing. It's massive. That's that's the 10 inch screen. We get a better. I think we have a better look of it somewhere. Yeah, there you go. I think it's a dual 10 inch screen. That's a lot of real estate for a small car. Is the infotainment screen small on the Santa Cruz? Are we talking about the base? The base screen? I don't think it says anything about the base screen. Try, trying to keep up with you, bro. They don't offer higher trims on non-all-wheel drive. Well, yeah, of course. Santa Cruz looks really weird, so I'll stick to the Honda Ridgeline. Honda Ridgeline looks pretty good. I definitely enjoy the looks of it. I like the front end of the Santa Cruz, and I like the fact that they are trying to be something unique, something different. So it's definitely going to get people's eyes out on the street. They'll be like, what the heck? Is that a new Subaru Baja? If they even remember what that was, more likely they don't. So they're going to be like, oh, what is that? That's a Hyundai? Or did someone just take the back off of a Tucson? It's kind of, it's kind of what it looks like. It has a very similar front end to a Tucson. Yes, they're going to kill off the useless uh, RXL. Uh, I talk about this in tomorrow's video. So even if it's just brief, I do talk about it for, for, for a little bit. It will be replaced by a larger three-row crossover. That's not the RX. should be called the TX. Comfort and performance. You guys. You guys. All right, I think I'm going to sign off. Thank you so much for you guys coming out tonight. Mikey in Vegas, thanks for the donation. Dami, thanks for the donation. If I missed anyone, thank you so much. Thank you guys for coming out tonight. It was a lot of fun. I'm tired, and we have a new end product. And I just love the fact that Hyundai is going hard in every single possible way they can. Performance cars crossovers they got a pickup truck now with the santa cruz hopefully i can bring it to you in person stay tuned i'll update you guys when i hear um what else what else electric cars they got ionic um i mean and they got hydrogen so they are attacking everything they possibly can 
Only thing I can think of that they're not well, and they're luxury brand Genesis. They're attacking luxury. What else? What is Hyundai not attacking and having some success in? I don't think there's anything. Their hybrids seem to be pretty decent, uh, and I just want to start testing more of their hybrids because I don't have any reviews on the channel yet for a Hyundai hybrid or a Kia hybrid, etc. I just I haven't had the chance to be able to do it. So definitely, if you guys are new to the channel, stay subscribed uh, or be subscribed. You wouldn't be, you can't stay subscribed. Anyways, it's late. I can't talk. Lots of cool things coming for Hyundai. Santa Cruz is one of them, but the Elantra N that we saw tonight. Oh, hopefully I can uh, give you guys some hands on driving with it. It'd be so much fun. Anyways, thank you so much, guys. That's a... Uh, Genesis is not playing. No, they're not. They're not messing around anymore. They, they got crossovers. <laughs> That's the name of the game. If you got crossovers, you're gonna succeed. Uh, would I take an MDX or an SX Prestige Tellure? I'd take an MDX any day of the week. But the problem is I haven't reviewed uh, the Palisade or the Telluride. But the MDX, I don't think there's a better. I don't I honestly I don't know if there's a better three row crossover on the market for like fifty some k. It is a phenomenal view. Can't wait to, to test the MDX Type S. That's going to kick serious ass. Anyways, yes, Genesis does need their own dealerships. That would help them massively. Uh, I see G90s here like once, once a day almost. It's bizarre. Such a terribly selling vehicle for the brand. This is just the, the hot market for Genesis G90s down here. Um, all right, guys, I'm going to end it there. Thank you so much for coming out. I'll catch you in the next live stream. I'm sure we'll do another live stream soon. There's always new products coming out. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. I'm getting in the video. Need to shut it down. Shutting it down.